Mitch, um, how long you lived in the Honduras? I moved down here in 2002, so seven and a half years or so. From where? I moved from Virginia. I'm originally from Missouri. Why did you move down here? I just kind of tired of the corporate life in the U.S. and want to do something different. And this is about as different as you can get. What do you do for a living here? I own a computer store, of Paradise Computers. We are kind of the IT department for the island. Now the uh, country is a pretty big country. Why do you actually choose here on this island? Uh, it's beautiful. Um, it's predominantly English speaking. Uh, my, my Spanish is okay, but uh, uh, I saw that the tourism industry here on Rotan was, was uh, really exploding and I uh, wanted to be part of that. I assume you've seen what's happened here in terms of politically with the uh, with the former president Zelaya or current president Zelaya, depending on what, how you characterize it. You could hear more. What happened? Uh, over mean, the years, uh, as he after he was elected, he did uh, several things that uh, kind of moved to the left. Uh, he was elected mostly as a centrist, uh, and uh, he veered sharply to the left. Uh, after he signed the Alba Agreement and became part of Chavez's group. Uh, several things started happening. Uh, he, he gave away some maritime territory uh, to Nicaragua. Uh, he boosted gave, it. Actually gave away? Yes. There, there was a decision in The Hague that defined uh, the maritime boundary between Nicaragua and Honduras. And there was an area that was still in dispute. They said they couldn't, uh, couldn't decide that. And Zelaya basically turned over the control of that to the Nicaraguan uh, government. And he didn't tell anybody about it. And that's an area that's been fished by, by Hondurans for, for years and years and years. And the only way they found out about it was that uh, the Nicaraguan Navy confiscated Honduran boats. So we had Honduran boats, Honduran crews in Nicaragua, and the uh, Honduran government would not do anything to help them get them back. All right. Well, there's doing something that's unwise that your country doesn't like and is doing something crooked or illegal. I right. mean, you, that decision may have been an unwise one, or is there something... Is something else about it? Well, leading up to uh, June 28th, uh, the day that he was taken out of office, uh, he, he started talking about the Quaterona, which is the fourth ballot box. And that was to, um, to institute a, a referendum on, on to change the con Constitution of Honduras to allow multiple terms for president. The, the Constitution of Honduras says that he can't do that. He doesn't have the power to hold a referendum. Uh, the Supreme Court voted 15 to, no, to 0 that what he was doing was illegal. He couldn't proceed with it. The Congress, after he was taken out, voted 125 to 3 to remove him from office. Everyone is very clear that what he did was illegal and, uh, against the Honduran Constitution. One of the things that I think that happened just before he was removed that it was most egregious, and it really isn't reported very much, is that he gathered a mob of about a thousand people and stormed a, a military base to retrieve these ballots. These ballots were printed in Venezuela because nobody in Honduras would print it for an illegal uh, poll. Flown in, the attorney general confiscated those ballots, held them in, a, in an air force base in Tegucigalpa. The next day, Zelaya, uh, you know, from the presidential palace, you know, gave really fiery speeches and, and gathered up this mob. And they loaded up on buses and trucks, drove to the air force base, physically broke in physically broke down the gates, physically took the ballots so that they could distribute them themselves. I can't imagine that happening in the states. I can't imagine that happening in any uh, democracy where a president would actually incite a mob to go against other parts of government. That's just a, a, an example of how strong uh, he was moving against the, the other parts. You know, everybody talks about the Quaterna, and that was certainly the, the keystone of it. The, the referendum. The referendum, right. And what he published right before, uh, uh, on June 25th, it was dated June 25th, it didn't actually come out until the 27th, uh, actually called for the, the, um, for the uh, an establishment of a constitutional convention, which could very easily replace the Congress. So the fear in, in Honduras was that it, was, it wasn't just a poll. It wasn't just a, hey, what's the country feel like? This was a, a definite move to remove the Congress and remove the Supreme Court and center the power all on him. It's a pretty classic uh, move uh, of, of how the governments that have followed the Chavez model will take control of the country. I assume you know that President Obama has uh, called for uh, uh, President Zelaya to be reinstated as president, or I don't know if he's been uninstated, however you want to characterize it. Um, why, why do you think, you're in America and you live down here, why do you think that President Obama ha is taking the side of, of uh, Zelaya? That's a hard question to answer, and I don't really know for sure. I mean, it's certainly perplexing for us down here who have lived through, uh, through all the buildup to this event. June 28th was the day he was removed from office, the, but this was a culmination of, of 
two or three years of, of actions. And to see uh, the American government take the stand where we're actually on the side of Chavez and Morales and uh, Ortega and Castro is just, it's really confusing to us. It's confusing to the Hondurans, it's confusing to us. As an American down here in business, I was very concerned before June 28th. I thought that there was a good chance that uh, at some point they may nationalize businesses, that we may lose our property. There was a lot of fear, a lot of unrest. June 28th, when, when Zelaya was removed, without a gunshot, without, uh, without a shed of blood, any bloodshed, there were some shots going into the, the palace, I guess, but uh, uh, that was a great day for Honduras. That was the best thing they could have done. Uh, we are much more comfortable on June 29th than I was on June 27th. Have you spoken to the American ambas ambassador to the Honduras? Yeah, we met with him in July, uh, f uh, two or three weeks after the, or two weeks, I guess, after the, uh, uh, after Zelaya was removed. What did he say? Uh, pretty much the, the, the party line. He, he basically quoted what we're hearing come out of Washington, D.C., that uh, uh, Zelaya was democratically elected, that uh, he was removed uh, illegally, and that he needed to be reinstated. Uh, there was a group of six of us, six Americans, that went and met with him, um, mostly from the island, some from the mainland, um, and all of us just totally disagree with that. I think it was a total misread of what was going on in Honduras.